Hi guys, welcome back. This is Srika. Today in this video, we'll be talking about very important uh, thing in SQL Server uh, as a part of performance tuning. First of all, I would like to start uh, with the procedure. Lot of my friend asked me question regarding if I have one procedure, how can I increase the performance of a procedure? What are the different things which I need to consider while writing procedure? Or if there is a procedure already present, already existing procedure, how could I increase the performance of that procedure? Are there any tricks or are there any things uh, which I need to apply so that my procedure will perform very fast? It will give me the better result in a very less time okay so uh, as we know there are a lot of things we need to consider for uh, for writing the procedure for getting the good and the fast result first of all whenever we are creating any procedure we need to first understand that there is one option called as a set no count so no count is one uh, one option if I am specifying it as on, what does it mean? Whenever my procedure is executing, it will give me the two things. It will give me the result and it will give me the messages that uh, how many rows has been updated, which table has been updated, right? So you can see that message part, you know, the message section. So uh, let's say if I am working on the very big data set and that big, uh, that big data set is coming from the very big calculation so when there will be a lot of calculations a lot of logs will be generated and the log will be placed in the message section so if the no count is off that time what will happen that time my procedure will send me the two kind of data one will be the result another will be the message yes so i but i am very much interested only in the data not in the messages so i need to specify as set no count on so it will give me only the data not the messages i can show you here select star from let's select one for example let's select it and let's run it when i am executing this one i will see the result and the messages right so in the message section you can see the one row affected and the this is the data so if i am saying i am making a set no count on what will happen i will show you here on and let's run it and let's see the difference when i execute this two statement what will i see i will see result and the message but in the message section i won't see how many rows has been affected right if i'm executing it what will i see i will see that no row has been affected let's see here now you can see one row vector so this is the performance thing which we need to consider this is the first step and we need to specify it at the top of the SP next thing we need to understand that uh, the the use of the procedure first of all are we going to use this procedure for the uh, live operation or are we going to use this procedure for the reporting purpose if we are going to use this procedure for reporting purpose then we can send the we can change the isolation level for that particular operation right for example i have one table that table is in a transaction and that table is in the procedure so my when i am executing my procedure that time that procedure required the access on that table so so procedure will request to that table and that when will when the request will reach to that table that time what will happen that time system need to wait till uh, till that table log will be removed right so in this in this case we need to we will be in the locking state so to avoid that we need to set some isolation level level read uncommitted so whatever the data will be there we'll just take it for our operations we won't wait to so the option for this is there are a lot of table hints no lock 
if we specify the no lock hint on a table it will work on that table only but if we we'll specify isolation for entire operation so that will be for all the tables next next uh, we need to think about the missing indexes in the queries missing indexes are those indexes which will tell us that these are the indexes if we'll create these indexes on the respective table we'll get that much of percentage gain so we need to think about the missing indexes there are a lot of sys uh, dmvs which can tell us that these are the indexes you can create it will give us the definition uh, of it also if we'll take it and we'll create and we'll definitely get the gain from the queries so missing indexes are very important next a uh, scalar function if i'm performing some kind of operation and right so if i'm using any function so for function is 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 done on the row basis so if i'm going i'm um, to use a scalar function so every time the data will come and that value will be passed to the function so functions query will be executed and we'll get the result after the execution of that function let's say i'm running one simple date function and i have one billion of rows and if i'm writing one uh, scalar function of that date to get uh, some year kind of or date kind of thing so that function will be executed for the one billion times so we need to have uh, some solution to have to to fix it we can go for the update statement where we can update the data and we can just use that column all right next we need to think about the covering index covering index is the index which include all the columns whatever we have in a select statement let's say if i have the non cluster index on the two column but my select query returning five column including that two column then i need to go with the covering index so covering index can be created with the help of include clause with a index six sometime you know uh, sometime creating a partition will also give us some performance gain so why partition is important so first of all we should understand what is partition partition is just splitting up a data of a one table into the multiple files so logically the table will be one but that data will be split into the multiple file here we have the flexibility to uh, store that files on the different file groups so we can place that file group on the different location different drive also so we can get a good performance because the io read will be very fast selecting a proper indexes now you know into sql server 2012 we have the concept called as the column store index but in but that has a limitation we can't update it but in sql server 2014 if we are using it we have the feature called as the cluster column store index which has the feature of updatable column store index if our data set is retaining a very big data and we need it for the analytic purpose then we need to think about some advanced kind of index and which we can go for the column store index but please remember one thing that column store index will be very beneficial if our system require a lot of data if our data is retaining a lot of data then only it is useful for the operations such like a searching from a one record to record column store will not be useful because column store store the data in a columns and that those column will store in segment and we call those segment in the row row groups right okay so uh, next understand uh, then uh, try to minimize physical read as you know what is physical read first of all we should understand the difference between the physical read and the logical read so physical read is just to reading the data from the disk and the logical read is to read the data from the buffer caching so uh, if i'm uh, if i want a single record from a 1 billion rows 
for example and if i am doing if i am bringing the lot of pages thousand pages just for a single record then that is called as the that is not a good way good way uh, to read the data it means our data pages are not good good stored there are a lot of issues like uh, fragmentation also we need to consider some fragmentation part so we need to reduce the physical read fragmentation issue what is fragmentation issue you know we will have a lot of indexes so index need to be fragmented after some time because you know pages uh, pages are scattered in all over the system right and extend also scatter all those places because basically we should understand the concept of fragmentation why fragmentation happen in the first case so for example if i am having one table and that table is having uh, 50 pages next day i'm doing some operations so some data will some data pages some data will be deleted updated so uh, there will be a gap right so that gap will be as it is and when the next day again when there will be a few operation insert or some something a new data will be added after those pages somewhere on the disk so the date there is a gap right and these pages are not consecutive so to avoid this kind of situation we have a two fragmentation option we need to consider dba basically dba people need to think about it one is index rebuilding another is index reorganizing reorganizing so index rebuilding is just to uh, dropping the old index and creating the that index and reorganizing means the it just reorganizing the index pages we won't drop it will uh, perform online it will perform offline so basically we need uh, rebuilding requires some downtime reorganize it doesn't require any downtime okay So fragmentation we have covered so these are a few basic points and the next very important is 11th one is to understand the execution plan execution plan understanding execution plan is very important for the developer and we need to understand the different things in there first of all we should know how to read it we need to read it from the right side and the things which we can see the different options called as the operator we need to consider we need to understand those then we need to understand how many operations are there uh, are there seek or the scan or the table scan or the index scan or the index key seek uh, then we need to uh, consider high level like is a loop join is there or merge join or the hash join these are the different things we need to consider so these are the basic thing we need to consider for increasing the performance of a procedure but mostly there are a lot of things to consider but mostly very few things need to consider which are related with the gaining of performance and that thing is just the index if your table is having a proper index and the query is written in such a way that it is utilizing all the indexes then your performance will definitely good right uh, so hope you like our video regarding how to increase the performance in a procedure and thanks for watching have a great day